Hello, my 3D printer peeps. At the request of Meshi, I am going to take you through their website, meshi.ai, and give you a brief demonstration of the tools it offers, what they do, and how to use them. Let's get started. Here I am on the Meshi website, meshi.ai. I'm going to walk you through the most common tools and a brief peek at how to use them and how they work. Let's start right here with text to 3D. Here in the text to 3D interface, you have the option to switch to image to 3D. Let's stick to text to 3D. Using this tool will take 10 credits per generation. And there are a few features you will need to learn. Let's look at those now. First, here is the prompt. This is where you type. Above the prompt, you will see three options, helper, examples, and tutorials. Should you click on helper, this AI chatbot will help you understand how to best type your prompts. Should you click on examples, you will see certain items that have been generated through the text to 3D prompt. When you click on it, it will demonstrate exactly how this interface was set up and how the text prompt was typed in order to generate that creature. And the final one right here, tutorials. This will take you to a prompt guide page where you can read through tutorials on how to better understand the way the system works. To clear the example, simply refresh your page and it will blank out. With the page blank, we have a few more options to look at. Here, under AI model, Meshi 4 is their most reliable and stable method. Meshi 5 is the latest version offering the fanciest features, but is more likely to have issues. Think of Meshi 5 as in beta. I will switch to Meshi 4. Here, we have two poses, A or T. Think of T as your model with his arms out, like a T, and A with his arms at his side, like an A. Flip the switch to T, unflip the switch to A. Here, under license, you will choose whether or not the model's private to you or available to other Meshi users. We will use private. For the symmetry feature, which for some reason does not have an icon to teach you more about it, off has symmetry completely disabled and you need to manually create both sides of your model. Auto, Meshi will automatically detect and apply symmetry based on the input geometry on and forces symmetry during the generation process. Sound confusing? It might be. I would suggest leaving it in auto. Let's talk here about fixed seed. If you leave this blank, a random seed will be used each time. This will create potentially a totally different output from the same prompt. If you turn this on and give it a number, it will create the same results every time. In other words, if you like the model generated and you want to make small changes, apply it a seed number, and then you can modify that model and get minor changes to that same model rather than a new result every time. A happy dog. This dog will be seated. Sitting. This dog will be sitting. This dog will have short hair. This dog will be a beagle. Generate. Here on the right side, you can see my four dogs. In order to highlight one for a closer look, just press the plus button. And here we go, we have a seated beagle. If you don't like these results, take your mouse right here and press retry. You have four attempts to retry. I'll press that now. Keep in mind, retry will remove the current renders and create all new ones. And here are our new dogs. Well, I <laughs> don't know what happened here. Let's not use that one. I do like this one here. Let's pop into that. It actually looks quite happy. I'd like to keep this one. Before we generate the final model, we can make some slight adjustments using a fixed seed. For example, let's go down here, turn
turn on fixed seed and I'm going to number it 13. And then I'm going to modify the prompt to say, this dog has a short tail and say, generate. Unfortunately, this adjustment gave me a dog with a longer tail. However, you can see this dog looks relatively the same as this dog. Let's go ahead and scrap this model. I will highlight this icon, press the three dots and press delete. I will use this one and we will generate our final model. But first we have two options to look at. Right here is your target poly count. Max is the maximum amount of polygons possible. It will retain the most detail of this generation preview right here. Fixed allows you to set the amount of polygons in this model. Adaptive will let the program decide what the ideal amount of polygons to create this dog is. Let's go ahead and choose adaptive and I will leave it at the default of medium and I will leave topology to triangle, which gives you the best detail. Finally, we have generate texture. Generating texture will require more time and another 10 credits. No texture requires less time and no credits. If you are doing 3D printing, no texture is probably the option you want. Just for fun, let's click texture and press confirm. And here is our final generation with texture. Oh wow, well, it's actually really cute. Meshi did a nice job. So there you go, you've got a textured beagle. I'm gonna go ahead and download this dog by pressing the download button. Depending on what software you intend to work with, you might want to choose different outputs such as OBJ, STL, 3MF, etc. If you are 3D printing, 3MF is likely your best option. I'm gonna download it in 3MF. Keep in mind, for 3D printing, you should render this without texture. I'll do that right now by returning to this draft, clicking this dog, checking no for mesh and pressing confirm. Keep in mind, no mesh costs you no additional coins to render. Here is our final mesh without texture. Go ahead and press download. And again, I would choose 3MF and press download. I will import the non-textured 3MF file. You will see Bamboo Lab does not recognize this 3MF file and tells you it will load the model only. Go ahead and press OK. And then we can resize this model however you'd like. I'll do 350%. And there you go. This is the non-textured 3MF file. It's worth noting that Meshi.ai doesn't necessarily create models with flat services that are best for 3D printing. Here you can see there are raised areas with overhangs that will not contact the bed. You'll have to decide if you want to try using supports or if you want to take this model and physically sink it into the bed to create that flat surface such as this. We now have a flat surface for the print to start and you would still want to use some supports for these remaining overhangs. And that is how you use Meshi to create a 3D model using an AI prompt. Here is that dog printed on a Bamboo Lab A1 with Overture Stone White PLA. It came out pretty nice. I'm going to return to the Meshi home screen and here you can click image to 3D you will notice it brought you to the same interface with image to 3D selected. Therefore, there's no need to go back and forth. You can switch back and forth right here. For image to 3D, you may drag an image into this box. I dragged a picture of an actual beagle and I'll press generate. Meshi has made us a couple of different 3D doggies. In order to create better results, you can turn on multi-view and then add additional photos. Therefore, taking specific photos for the purpose of image to 3D can help you create better drafts. 
For example, here's an image of a penguin. We can now do multi-view by uploading a side view and a rear view and generating this model. And here are the four renders of our penguin. This one is pretty darn good. It looks just like it. When working with image to 3D, you'll want to be very sure to feed it as high a quality and clear a view of your item as possible. Let's go back to the main screen and move on to AI texturing. We'll use AI to add texture to a 3D model you already have. Since we're having fun working with animals, let's drag an untextured dog STL file. This file came from printables and is simply called dog figure. Meshi will attempt to identify and texture this 3D model. First, it will render the model. Then you may click texture here or here. I'd say this is pretty close to texturing this doggy model. If you'd like to try some manual changes, you can go down here and choose texture edit. I'm going to click and hold to paint the eyes and say, make dog's eyes look straight ahead and click retexture. We've now got three options. I uh, like that one. Go ahead and press apply. Then save to model. We now have a new render of our doggy with his eyes facing forward. Here is the results of a meshy four texture. You can see they are somewhat more realistic than the meshy five texture. However, the eyes and nose are a little bit rough. You can always press free retry or texture edit to see if you get better results. Let's try one free retry. Let's see our results. Not perfect, but better. This is the basic idea of how to take an untextured 3D model and add texture. We have one more prompt to mess with, and that is text to image. Let's click on that. Here, rather than create a model, we're gonna create an image. I would like to see a picture of a happy couple sitting on a beach watching the sunset. Be mindful of typos. Give it the best chance to understand you. Let's have a look at our results. And they are pretty fantastic. I would say this is a happy couple sitting on the beach watching a sunset. You can choose image to 3D and create a 3D model from this. I would use something a little less complicated for this feature. Let's do that together now. Female with long red hair in a dress. I will choose Meshi 4 and we'll generate this. Here are the results for pretty girls with long red hair wearing a dress. If you would like to convert this image into a 3D model, you simply click image to 3D. If you like this image, you can right click, press save image as, and you can keep it. If it's not exactly what you like, you can provide a reference image. For example, I can drag an image of a redhead model into the reference image and regenerate. Now Meshi has source material as a reference to help better create what I'm asking. Here we have a pretty redhead model with long red hair wearing a dress. You may return to any of these four tools by using the pull down menu right here. Text to voxel is being retired. If you'd like to return to all of the assets you've created, you would simply click my assets and here is everything we've created today. Under the resource tab, you can find additional programs, tools, and resources, such as a file converter, their creator program, their blog, 
tutorials and documentation, as well as their help center for those of you working in Unreal, Unity, Blender, Maya, and such, you will find the plugins for those programs here under Downloads. In addition to tools that allow you to create your own models and textures, Meshi has a community of makers that offer models for you to download. You can poke through these models using the search feature or the various categories that they are organized within. Should you see one you like, left click to open it. This screen offers a full 360 degree view of this model, as well as the texture and model prompts used to generate it. You may leave a comment for the maker, you may favorite it, and most important, you may download this model. And there is our basic tour of the Meshi website. Let me know which tools you like the most, and should you give it a try, link me to your results. I'm Mr. Greg. We just visited Meshi.ai, and you're on 3D Rundown.